so welcome everybody hope everybody is uh, staying safe you know uh, uh, my topic today is around the role of cim in digital transformation right uh, two big word alerts that is like cim and digital uh, how do we really uh, make this simple to un uh, understand and uh, you know how do you really build a journey i'm not sure the journey that newtan has taken uh, how do we uh, uh, build a foundation from uh, on cim and we use of course open source uh, wso to is as part of it you know uh the, i also feel that the topic is more relevant now given the pandemic uh, situation and the crisis that we are going through and how uh, companies are going to adjust and sell their products online right uh, uh while enabling digital services for their customers right a uh, uh, quick intro uh, i've been uh, a couple of decades in the silicon valley worked in companies like uh, juniper network service now uh fortunate to be part of newtanix when it was small uh, joined almost 7 years back you know um the company i've seen the company grow from you know like few hundreds to over 6000 uh employees right now it's been great right you know uh, founded by dirac uh, almost 10 years back right um, and i'll talk uh, i have a slide on the company because i think it's interesting story few points there too um as far as my charter one of the leader in the saas engineering team uh, manages the cim platform we call it the mind tanix uh, underneath we power it by the open source identity server a uh, wso identity server uh, work, work closely with identity server team. uh i also manage the e-commerce subscription digital de delivery some of the hybrid cloud services along with the boss and few architecture groups uh, within the same team you know? um uh want to take the opportunity to thank the wso team basically i think this is my second presentation so we we'll get started uh in the next slide at a high level yeah this is what i want to really go through today is a you know quick overview to come of course what what does it mean uh, what does it what do you mean by really digital transformation like what do you mean by uh, uh customer or a consumer i am right? uh, why do we really need it the key pillars our journey of implementing some of these uh, key pillars you know of cia and some of the futuristic things you know uh, we want to really talk about uh, how identity is evolving from a centralized identity to a federated identity to a decentralized identity where you hold your identity right so future trends of uh, identity actually to look at the company uh, so if we are a global leader uh, a cloud platform company that allows you to manage your applications at scale right uh, with uh, utmost uh, unparalleled simplicity uh, choice and portability right uh, what do i mean you can run your app anywhere on our platform uh, you can run it in a private cloud public cloud hybrid right um, uh, that's the vision for our company right um, we, we started the company as a, a disruptor in the by uh pioneering the hyper convergence such as space right uh, challenging the traditional ptai vendors right where you had a uh, decoupled storage uh, servers uh, and virtualization right um so if you see some of the things that stands out uh, in terms of the customer number we have close to 70000 customers but two things that uh, we really care about uh, you see it's almost 100% customer retention 97% is really unheard of right uh, and also the nps score of 90 plus very rarely seen uh, in uh, cloud platform companies right um, those are the two things we really pride in why uh, because uh, we look at the customer we try to understand the customer i think so the customer the customer profile is too important uh, and the cim uh, plays right into that you know um, again the main goals is for us as a company we want to have a uh, modernize every data center right uh, convert every legacy tree tier to a a uh, modern uh, platform uh, which is hybrid cloud enabled it is multi cloud uh, doesn't matter right um, and also help our customers transform their uh, digital process and services right? those are the things that drive us as a company you know um and these are the numbers by the way uh, as of april 30 okay. so the two big uh, alerts big word alerts is digital transformation cm what does uh, uh, digital transformation really mean right i think what does it mean uh, it's about uh, you know using technology to transform digital technology to transform or modify your existing business process culture and the customer experience right uh, to meet the new challenges basically. 
So it's just not a technology problem. It's a process problem. It's a people problem. It's a culture problem. Right? You can have great technology, but if you don't change your process and culture, you are not going to be successful in that transformation. Right? Um, it always begins and ends with how we engage and talk with our customers. You know, uh, it's all about it. Two examples, two great examples that comes to our mind when it comes to transfers: Netflix and Adobe. Think about it. A few years back, they were sending hard copy or CDs to your home to watch a movie, right? Or, or download a software. Um, see how far they have come as a company. You know? Both of them now digitally deliver their software to everybody. I mean, Nutanix is on a similar journey. We want our software to be available digitally available to everybody, right? So, so can run and scale their infrastructure software, right? So it's all about customer. It's about customer journey. Um, Again, we have heard uh, CIM as a buzzword here. Uh, I mean, I would say this industry evolving term. To me, it's about what to see here. It's about creating a secure, seamless digital experience, right? And you put customer ID at the beginning of that journey, right? Uh, the customer might engage with you in different channels. It's very only channel they talk to you. Web browser, desktop, mobile device, right? So again, uh, it's about the security and the experience aspect. Right? That, to me, that is what uh, really a CIM, a CIM is about. And in B2B world, we call uh, it's more of a customer IAM. In a B2C world, we call it such a consumer IAM. But ultimately, it's all about your customers and uh, their profile and how, how they interact with you. How do I simply explain? I was looking at words. How do I simply explain what is the value proposition? Why I really need a CIM? What is the focus? Right? There are two things that comes to my mind. Customers always want a great user experience, meaning frictionless experience, right? Uh, if you think about it based on the PwC survey, you can see that every one in three customers, they, they walk away from the brand on their first uh, uh, bad experience of using that product. Very, very powerful if you think about it. If you're building a product, if you're planning to think about it, if you don't design it right, right for the right experience, you'll lose one third of your customers or potential customers, right? Uh, huge, if you think about it. Now, customers want better security and protection uh, from fraud breaches, trust, right? Um, if you, again, going back to the uh, Ping Identity study that was done 2018, 81% of the customers stop or rather, Reduce their engagement with the brand once you have a breach in your system. And CAM falls right into that, right? And one in four will stop interacting with you totally. Just imagine the amount of revenue. You can literally kill a company if you don't implement the CAM platform the right way. So the two great takeaways, it's about user experience. It's about building the trust, right? Everything else uh, goes there. Now, uh, Prabhat also talked about the pillars of CIM. Um, I mean, this is a kind of an enhanced version of it or a different view or perspective from a customer. You know, uh, We talked about progressive profile management. Uh, how do we really track an anonymous user who want to try out your product, convert them to a real customer profile, right? Uh, then once you build a profile, how do we really authenticate using various schemes, right? How do I really personalize that experience? How do I know what I have to show to the customer, right? And ultimately, it's about APIs. Uh, uh, APIs has to be developer friendly. It has to be treated like any other product. It's about data security, bunch of data security. And there's a bunch of non-functional requirements in the CIM system. It has to grow. Think about the millions of customers you have to handle, the scale, the performance, right? Uh, some of the areas for the touch. So uh, I want to give our experience or our use case around some of these pillars, and then uh, uh, we will go through each bubble. You know, um, what does progressive profile mean, right? For example, if you come to Nutanix, uh, we give you a test drive experience. Uh, uh, it allows you to really see the power of our product, and we strongly believe that somebody who tries and experiences a product, um, they usually, if it's a good product, they love the product, they buy the product, right? So uh, how do we really progressively profile a person? We ask the very bare minimum uh, information, just one field, right? If it's email, it's email. Uh, so you can try out our product. Now you have tried out our product. Now you're more interested in knowing more about uh, what is hyper cloud, what is hyper cloud, right? I know that you are interested. I will ask a couple of more fields. Can I know your company, your job title, right? I also give an optional uh, consent, right? We'll also ask an op optional consent uh, with the right privacy policy, of course, to create a MyNutanix account, right? 
once I know I have your profile with me, I can start uh, doing all the personalizations, the other things that comes about. This is a simple progressive step I think we have implemented. Imagine if you had a great product, you ask a customer or a prospect to fill 10 fields. You probably will drop 80% of the traffic right there, right? So that's why the uh, power of progressive profile management is key uh, for Legion. Let's talk about the service provider. Now that I have a profile, uh, right? Um, I'm a customer, I can see various uh, service providers or services I can access, right? As a digital service, I, can, I want to access support, I want to access community, I want to try out my cloud products, other related products, right? Um, so uh, all of these products uh, typically will use some sort of authentication scheme. Mm -hmm. But as a user, you don't want to keep logging to every service, right? What is the best way of solving it, right? Uh, one thing I think uh, WSU has, uh, as an IS has done a great job is uh, being protocol agnostic, right? I could have my services in either SAML, OpenID, or I still can go uh, access each of these services without re logging, right? A great a customer experience. Imagine somebody has to remember eight or nine uh, usernames or passwords and call services, right? Um, it defeats the whole uh, frictionless experience, right? So having an SSO with standard protocols is one of the key. Um, uh, once we go away from identity, it also, uh, there's a concept identity federation, right? Uh, I don't want to give you my information. I would like to use my uh, identity provider, whether it be Okta, Azure AD, uh, ADFS, or anything else, right? Or uh, ISO sitting somewhere, right? But that's where the power of login with company ID comes, right? Uh, you, we use identity federation to allow customers to bring their identity, right? Um, uh, to feel the trust factor. We use minor, uh, minor tannics use our CIM platform, like right? underneath uses some of the capabilities of the ISO, right? Um, so having the right protocols, uh, industry standards protocols um, uh, with the federation, and later on we'll ta talk about um, say how federation is really evolving into more of a decentralized identity in the future, right? Um, personalization. Support and insight again goes back to the slide I mentioned the 97% retention rate for our customers and uh, the CSAT score of 90. What does it mean? Really take care of a customer. We know our customer, what's happening in their environment, right? Uh, what exactly is going on with the, uh, how many cases are open, right? What are the diagnostics on the cluster, right? Um, we can do recommendations and insights. Uh, you really have one year customer if you're able to proactively tackle your uh, uh, customer's problem to a online digital experience, right? Without even having to call support, right? So uh, we take a lot of pride in building insight based on the profile that we have built uh, that the CRM uh, handles as part of the platform. Okay. APIs, I think a lot of these sessions has been around APIs. To me, APIs are like products, right? It has a life cycle. You have a design, versioning, uh, managing of these APIs, right? Documentation. And then ultimately deploying uh, versions of the APIs in a pure cloud native way, I think. Uh, any CIM system needs to have a well-defined API, right? Uh, the success of any product for that matter. Non-CIM also defined you having good. Uh, now the APIs are being used in different ways by different companies. The smart com companies like Trulio who directly monetize their APIs, right? You get charged for a SMS call or uh, you get charged for a SMS message or a video call through APIs. The other company you use uh, APIs, uh, which is built into CIAM in general as an uh, enabler of your business. Either way, you have to have a rich set of APIs that the external systems can integrate. Uh, I think Prabhat test on it. Um, usually the IAM is treated as a silo, it's customer, or C, or that. It has much more to do with it, right? It, is, it has to do with your profile, what you tried out, how do you tie the marketing sales lead funnel together to tr truly build a customer centric IAM, right? Um, we also have built a capability within our MindNotan platform to give API key management, right? Um, using simple API key management, you can allow uh, an identity associated with an API key, take it to your product, whether on-prem or in cloud, uh, enable that API can do one-click interaction. Just imagine you can upgrade your cluster with one click, or you can license your cluster with one click, right? All the information on the cluster is sent back to the cloud with one click, without even customers doing it. Um, so the power of API key management is huge. Uh, we have done a lot of good work around this to, you know, in a, to enable a lot of our product features in cloud. 
let's touch through some of the security and scalability aspects right um a cim system should have basically right um fraud detection uh, unlike a lot of the data breaches that happen which is in mass in scale uh, fraud typically happens directed towards individual users or customers right the fraud uh, the fraudster try to gain access to your credentials uh, through a third party compromised site or through phishing attacks typically right uh, uh, then they try to use that identity on a more uh, like a bank uh, bank account or bank uh, portal right because typically some most of the time people share their password often an easy way is to share that the attacker will take your unique password try to do. so having some sort of fraud detection through an mfa is a key, one of the key security needs of a cim uh, solution uh, you can do google authenticator sms and there are a lot of evolution around two factor to which i'll talk in a future discussion video and number 2 you could do adaptive authentication right uh, depending upon the context and the security risk you could really enable the next level of authentication for example you have a customer who's always logging from us the customer uh, try to log in from a different device or a different country you could prompt for a second factor right again a great experience we allowed him seemingly but uh, when we felt there was a higher risk level we told him to provide the next level so adaptive authentication is another big feature right um privacy concern management is huge uh, having very clarity a uh, good clarity around privacy uh, and uh, clearly articulating your concern about what gather data you gather and what information you share with third party is going to be very huge you know um, uh, uh, in future i'll talk about uh, some of the slides the next slides i'll cover i'll we'll actually talk about how uh, we can better protect the ai information okay uh, but with gdpr this is the key a component uh, you know any time uh, a cim system should have and protect privacy and uh, concern management as part of the platform threat analytics always good to know what's happening in uh, learn from the behavior again in the future you could use machine learning to learn from the previous pattern right uh, use algorithm to prevent attacks uh, so threat and reporting is a key aspect of uh, this certification a lot of cim companies look at certification basically soc 1 and 2 and iso one is about how do you what are the security controls you put on the data iso is about of how do you operate your data centers how do you operate your operation and process right so uh, this does help build customers trust when you have these uh, soft one soft two iso certification right um, um, and then prabhat of course talked about availability scalability and reliability um, uh, i think this is one of the way uh, Uh, underestimated part of a cim solution right uh, typically uh, uh, for example we started this journey six years ago we had five accounts or 10 accounts or 100 accounts today we have hundreds and thousands of accounts right how can i really provide a stable and reliable service without compromise my sl right uh, a cim system should truly able to handle that scale uh, to me uh, that's where the when the product is architected right Uh, without changing the code you should be able to scale the product from one user to million users right uh, the great cim systems will be always able to do that you know uh, then having an a, ha right uh, multi region ha availability right that's another key component and we can get it as various other uh, not uh, functional requirements but these are very important as you scale your uh, cim system okay um, I'd like to spend few time on the future trends. Uh, this is my last slide. So, as far as um, future trends, right? Both uh, capabilities, what we are doing today as part of the uh, CIM solution. Okay. Um, uh, all of those are needed. Those protocols are not going anywhere. Those capabilities are needed. What more can I do as part of the CIM? Uh, password or uh, passwordless authentication is a big thing nowadays right uh, you can use leverage common devices to easily uh, authenticate uh, online services that is mobile or desktop right fido2 is a new spec uh, web authn spec or ctap process they use a passwordless authentication most of these uh, passwordless authentication uh, uh, usually work uh, with asymmetric uh, cryptography right um, you have a secure store A wallet, what a what we call on the client side. You have your uh, laying party. Typically, your secure store uh, show has a pointer to your laying party, the private key and the public key, right? As part of the registration process, you tend to store your private key as part on the client side, and the public key is with the laying party. 
that way you can exchange information signed information across and validate who is it basically add on top of it you can add biometrics right um, biometrics is a second factor i talked about previously uh, sms and otp uh, used to be huge now there are cases where people have uh, swapped uh, uh, sim cards right how do you really protect against uh, that second factor that's where you bring a, a biometric and behavioral authentication into the system right um, you are verifying the user's identity using a piece of information who the who, who they are basically right whether it's facial recognition or it's voice or fingerprinting right um it's a challenge response system basically in such a system typically what happens is basically you get challenged uh, uh, the first part of the negotiation process is the possession of the device right uh, that you have and the second part you are challenged for example of your voice or the pin or before real 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 authenticity i think uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, much more protection in terms of second biometrics being in the second factor right we talked about cyber security uh, and machine learning as an exploration right um, in terms of really understanding the pattern right of a user every click and action of the user like you can use a regression algorithm you can use a classification algorithm in machine learning to learn some of the outliers right um, uh, credit card frauds um, a common type of frauds right you can classify it and then detect and prevent attacks so machine learning and cyber security use when it comes to a ci platform right um, and finally a topic that's been had a lot of buzz around is decentralized identity it's about owning and controlling your identity right uh, and your privacy uh, and your pi information uh, while you securely access these uh, digital services right uh, it's about putting your identity in the hands of the actual customer or the user itself right um, think about it a remote uh, let's say a remote uh, hacker had access to your uh, one of your pi social security number now the only way you can prove your identity is requiring the possession of that physical device which is huge now in the case of decentralized identity your identity is uh, typically replaced by a did uh, that is uh, self owned by the user uses again asymmetric uh, cryptography uh and uh, the transactions are returned into a distributed ledger a good example of distributed identity imagine uh, you want to open a bank account right um, you go to the bank they ask for your uh, driver's license assuming that the dmv had given you a digital uh, claim verified claim that is tied to a date you wouldn't have to uh, actually give your physical uh, dmv uh, uh, physical license to the bank right the bank could have Uh, uh, talk uh, uh, digitally talk uh, with your uh, did information in the ledger uh, got your verified claim uh, verified with the both issuer as well as the subject as a verifier and, and issued your bank account that's the beauty of it right so basically you could transact everything at your home without having to provide uh, so many set of proof there right so your passport lot of e government initiative has been here, taking place voting initiative right to prevent fraud uh, so decentralized identity is going to be huge uh, as a next generation technology for identity uh, it's a real evolution from a centralized identity to a federated identity to a decentralized identity where you truly own um, and own your both pii information as well as your identity right uh, so lot of these uh, gdpr related information also kind of goes away if you start owning your the company doesn't have to really worry about some of those and to close with uh, uh, again i go back to the big picture what uh, what does uh, ci mean to me it means to me more of a digital ex uh, experience right frictionless experience uh, to my product understanding the customer's identity and uh, doing it in a more secure and trusted way right um, uh, that's the key to the ci